The 25th Hour Radio Show. Willie, I guess the obvious first question is to ask you, uh, back in high school, what made you want to participate in track in the first place? Um, you know, I, I grew up in a neighborhood where sports was really kind of uh, very, it wasn't important, but, but all, all my friends and, and, and a lot of the older kids, we all participated in sports, particularly on my street in Uniondale. And, um, you know, I looked up to some of the athletes in, the, in my school that were uh, doing well and succeeding in, in sports and uh, and the recognition that they got in the community and, and from the other student body and the teachers. And um, it, it, it drew me to, to sports. Uh, I never knew that I would have any ability in sports. In fact, early on, I didn't have any ability. Um, but I think the main thing was that I, I was willing to contribute. Uh, I was willing to try to, to better myself. Uh, help the community, help the school, and um, that, that's one of the main things that really drew me to sports. So you left high school with the honor of being named the National High School Athlete of the Year and took your talents to Auburn University. Was it an easy transition for you moving from the high school level to the college level? Uh, no, not at all. I, I, I tell you what, Rob, I pretty much dominated on the, uh, on the high school level. Um, I was, you know, as you said, I was the National High School Athlete of the Year, and I'm I went, you know, sometimes a year or two uh, without ever being beat in the in the in the sprints. So um, I, high school, I was a pretty dominant athlete. Uh, when I got into college, you know, it was just the opposite. The transition was was, it was pretty hard. You had guys that that really understood track and field. Um, you know, in the high school level, it's a lot different from college. College, it becomes a business. You have to earn your scholarship. Uh, you've got to run every single weekend. Uh, you're in and out of town. So it was more. It became more of a business and, um, than it was in high school. High school was fun. College, I had to work at it. So I lost a lot of races my freshman year at Auburn uh, until I made the transition from the hundred meters, two hundred meters, up to the four hundred meters. Uh, it took me about a year to get accustomed to the four hundred meters, learning how to run it, uh, being a patient with it, um, uh, developing my strength levels, uh, and uh, finally I started having a little bit of success in the four hundred meters. You know, and at the 400 is where you receive so much of, of your success, like you say, uh, not to mention your Olympic gold medal. In your mind, what do you consider your crowning achievement to be back when you were actively competing? Uh, I'll tell you what, you know, I, 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 um, I look back on my career and I, I, I really am truly blessed uh, all the way through high school and college. Um, I, I guess the Olympic medal would have to be the crowning achievement, but there are a lot of things that I accomplished along the way. Uh, being the world champion, the American champion, the NCAA champion, uh, I think I think it's, it's a culmination or a combination of all these things. Um, I, I look back and I say, well, you know, something I won every single major championship in the, the sport of track and field, all the way from high school all the way to the Olympic Games, and 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 that to me is just, is my crowning achievement, being able to go through all of these championships, competing against uh, um, uh, other uh, athletes of like ability and and. Um, uh, and still being able to come out on top. Yeah, you know, you continue to compete long after most athletes in track and field would have would have called it quits, man. You actually <laughs> set a world's yeah. master record in the 400. Uh, Go ahead. I, I, I don't think I could get enough of uh, track and field, but, uh, you know, it's, it's really like other sports. You know, you, you, when, you, when you get up, you, you're ready to, to get close to retirement age, you know, you feel like, you know, golly, I, I hadn't achieved everything. You know, I want to do this, I want to do that. And you, you keep on trying to come back, see if you can come back and come back. And, you know, your body can only take so much. It really it really doesn't. Uh, it, it's resilient, but only to a point. So um, I, I, I stopped running when I was 40. Um, I ran in the, at the University of Alabama. Uh, my intent was to try to break the world master's record in the 400 meters. Um, really, my intent was even bigger than that. I was really trying to make a team somewhere, an international team at my age. And, um, but instead, I had to settle for the world record for that age group. And, um, and pretty soon after that, I just figured, you know, I had done everything uh, um, uh, that was noteworthy in, in track and field, and it was probably time to, to go on and start uh, coaching and, and uh, passing on my knowledge to other athletes. So right now you're involved with Pure Motion. What exactly is Pure Motion, and what do you do as a part uh, of that Pure team? Motion, yeah, we are a functional strength training um, uh, facility in Pelham, Alabama. We, uh, we manufacture um, functional strength systems. These are, these are strength systems. Uh, they're not traditional stuff like your bench press, your squat, squat cages and squat racks, those type of things. It, is, it looks like a cage, like a giant monkey bar, 
we we make those uh, we, we we manufacture them and sell them and we ship them all around the world. Um, I uh, I've stepped away from the traditional ways of developing strength and started um, um, started uh, being trained by my mentor George Bonet, who's a five-time Olympian and uh, bobsled and judo from Puerto Rico, and he's taught me a lot about how sports needs to be trained, how, how we need to strength train athletes. And that's not flat on your back doing a bench press. It's not vertically doing a, a squat or something like that. We do functional type stuff. We do a locomotive type stuff, pulling tires, pushing power sled. We climb ropes. Uh, it, 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 if I had to do, it, it centralize it to anything, it would be kind of like a CrossFit, but the CrossFit is still uh, unorganized and it's not theory-based. Uh, we, we All our stuff that we do at uh, Pure Motion it's very basic. There's a methodology to it. There's a method to the madness. We do not let our athletes just go in there nilly willy and just and just all over the place and do what they want. There's a technique to the lifting, and you get functionally strong in a very very short period of time. So, do you get the same type of excitement helping others make gains in their sport as opposed to when you made gains when you were competing, or is it a different type of excitement or different yeah, type it's of enjoyment? A, it's a different, yeah, it's it's Rob. It's very different. You know. When I, when, I, when I used to step on the line, I used to be nervous for Willie Smith. You know, it was like, you mm-hmm. know, did I, did I do enough to, 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 to get through this race and win this one? Uh, but ultimately, I had, you know, myself to, um, to be held accountable to. You know, if I didn't do enough stuff, then, then, you know, I could always look back and say, well, you know, you didn't do this, you didn't do that. Now, it's a different type now. You want to see your athletes succeed, and you want it to be on some of the advice that you um, – uh, you know that you've given them and some of the training that you've given them, but ultimately the joy and, and the, that that personal satisfaction joy belongs to them now, and uh, they get that um, uh, as a result of applying the principles, working hard, staying motivated, uh, and and those type of things. Um, uh, so it's it's a little bit different. It's, it's it's a joy both ways to me, but it's just a little bit different in sharing it and then doing it yourself. I first met you in Anna, Illinois, a few months ago when you were part of a summer camp for young athletes. When you when you go to these camps across America, what's the advice you give to these young kids on how to be successful? Um, I, I tell the kids that um, one of the main things I tell them is they've got to develop a support structure. They've got to find some adults, an adult structure that they can trust, somebody that they can believe in, somebody that they can trust, their coaches teachers, guidance counselors, parents, pastors in their church, you know, people that will help them to succeed. And you've got to surround yourself with these people um, because the world is, is a very, very different place. Back when I was growing up, you could find these people everywhere. I mean, they were always willing to help. Nowadays, it's a very different world. Um, people are, are not as willing to get involved with you. Uh, there's always a lot of um, people only willing to give them uh, uh, the wrong advice and to take advantage of people. Um, at young athletes, they have to find somebody that they can trust, a group of people they can trust, the people that are going to direct them in the right path. And I was very fortunate growing up that I had a high school coach. I had two very loving parents. I had uh, teachers in my school. I mean, not just one or two teachers. I had several teachers in my school that, that, that saw my ability and that helped to direct my ability. Now, they didn't give me anything. I worked, and they helped me work. Uh, through it the hard way, you know, I got, the, there was some times when I got bad grades, you know what I'm saying, but they were there to help support me and help me to get over the hump and get the grades that improve so that I can continue to, to, um, to compete. Uh, athletes today have a lot of challenges, you know, they've, they, uh, they've got to become more self-reliant, you know, there's a lot of distraction with computers and cell phones and all social media and all this other stuff. There's a lot of distraction that was not there in my day uh, that's there today. And these kids have got to learn to tune this stuff out because uh, these things can become a detriment and, and then fully inhibit their athletic ability and their athletic success. So, Willie, where, where can everyone go as far as, as, as a website to get more information about Pure Motion and, and what you have to offer? Uh, well, you can go. There's two places you can go. You can go to puremotion.net, uh, and that will tell you a little bit about what we do. Uh, there's a link on there that... Uh, I think has a little bit to do with speed training. We have some uh, Facebook stuff, some uh, YouTube stuff of me doing some demonstration and that type of stuff at Pure Motion. Uh, another place you might go for speed equipment and that type of thing. I do some side work for um, uh, sportspeed.com, and uh, they've got the, all the, the equipment and stuff that I use uh, in all of my training. So, um, uh, Or you guys could just email me. I do not mind emails at sportspeedwilly 
at gmail.com. And you guys just, you guys can email me and talk to me about your training programs if you're plateauing or anything. If you guys, if, if I have any suggestions, I'd certainly uh, be willing to help out. Well, Willie, thanks a lot for being a guest on the 25th Hour Radio Show. Good luck with Pure Motion, and I, I wish you nothing but a blessed life moving forward, sir. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Radio Show. Show.